In the last presentation, we have understood how to use input method to receive input from the user and we have learned how to receive simple data from the user. Now, in this presentation, we will learn how to input a list using loops. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is problem with the input method. The second topic is input a list using loops. Let's first understand what is the problem with the input method. So, what is the problem with the input method? Input method has the capability to receive user input, but it always returns input from the user as a string. So, it will never return an integer or any other data type. It always returns input from the user as a string. Now, that's a big problem because let's say if we are interested in receiving multiple inputs from the user and we want to store them as individual list items, then we won't be able to store them as individual list items because Python will treat the entire list which is received from the user as a string. To better understand this, let's consider one example. For this, we need to open our command prompt and we need to activate the Python interactive shell. Now, let's say that the requirement is to receive a list of numbers from the user. For this, we will give the prompt to the user, enter a list of numbers. And this means we need to provide enter a list of numbers as an argument. And then input method will receive the list and we will then make numbers variable point to that list. For this, we will together type this command numbers equal to input enter a list of numbers. So, we are providing this string as an argument to input method. This will eventually be printed on the screen. And in this way, we will ask the user to enter a list of numbers. After receiving the numbers from the user, numbers variable will point to that list. Now, let's hit enter. We are receiving this prompt, enter a list of numbers. Let's type 67, 48 and 90. This means that we are interested in making this numbers variable point to this list of items. Let's hit enter. Let's now type numbers to check whether numbers variable is pointing to this list or not. Let's hit enter. We are getting this string 67, 48 and 90. Now, this is the problem because we are receiving this as a string and not as individual items of the list. To understand this better, let's visualize the actual picture, what we want and what we are getting. Our expectation was to get this list with three items 67, 48 and 90 and the indices are 0, 1 and 2. Numbers variable is pointing to this list. This is what we want. But what we are getting is totally different from this list. We are getting this list with a total of eight items where each item is a character and numbers variable is pointing to this list. We have these individual items as characters. We have the character 6, then character 7, then a white space character, then character 4, character 8 and so on. So, we are getting a list of total 8 items and we don't want this. We want a list of total 3 items where the values are 67, 48 and 90. Now, how to get this list and not this list? For this, we need to use loops. So, this is our next topic that is input a list using loops. Let's now understand how to input a list using loops in Python. In order to see this in action, let's open our command prompt and activate the Python interactive shell. Now, the requirement is to receive numbers from the user and store them as individual items of the list. The first thing that we need to do is to ask the user to enter the number of elements they want to enter. For this, let's together type this command n equal to int input enter the number of elements. We have already seen this type of command in our previous presentation. We will receive the input with the help of this input method and to this input method we are passing this string enter the number of elements. With this it will be clear that the user has to enter the number of elements. We want to receive that number as an integer and not a string. That's why we need to do this typecasting also. We are doing typecasting here itself. We are providing input method as an argument to int method. And then we are making n point to the value which is received from the user. Let's hit enter. 
we are getting this prompt enter the number of elements now let's type 3 we want to enter 3 elements with this n must point to this value 3 let's hit enter as we are getting these 3 arrows this indicates that everything is working correctly and for sure n is now pointing to value 3 it is pointing to integer 3 and not character 3 because we have typecasted the input already now let's create an empty list numbers equal to square brackets with this command we would be able to create an empty list now what is the next step after creating the empty list we want to receive items in this list we have already received the number of elements from the user we will use this value to receive inputs in this numbers list for this we need a loop called for loop in python we have the concept called for loop in python which allows us to repeat a certain piece of code multiple times as we want to store three items in this list we will run our loop three times for this we will use this value let's see how let's hit enter and let's type for i in range n this is the syntax we need to follow with this we will repeat a certain piece of code n number of times range n means that values will go from 0 to n minus 1 so i will receive values one by one from 0 to n minus 1 we know that value of n is right now 3 so this loop will run three times which means that the content within this loop will run three times and this is what we want note that after typing this command we need to put colon here in order to continue and go within this for loop so let's hit enter now we will get three dots which indicates that we are now inside this for loop we must have to add an indentation here and then we must type this command x equal to int input we want to receive three different inputs and that is why this command is needed with the input method we will receive numbers from the user and with this int method we would be able to type cast it and then x variable will eventually point to the value which is received from the user after receiving the input we must store that input inside numbers variable for this we will use a special method which allows us to add items in the list this method is called the append method append method has the capability to add items at the end of the list right now the list is empty let's say that the user input is 67 so we will receive 67 here x is now pointing to 67 let's hit enter and type numbers dot append x with this we can easily append x to numbers so numbers dot append x will add this item x at the end of this list as we have received input 67 67 will be added to this list so the new list will consist of one item 67 this is all we need to do in this for loop we want to repeat this piece of code three times we have done this for the first time let's do it again let's say that the second input is 48 we will receive that input we'll type cast it and make x point to that value so eventually x is now pointing to 48 now with numbers dot append x we can easily add value 48 at the end of this list so now in this numbers list we have two items 67 and 48 in this way we can accept the third input as well i hope the idea is clear as we are done with this for loop let's hit enter and now again we need to hit enter to get outside of this for loop after hitting enter we are ready to type in our inputs let's type 67 48 and 90 let's hit enter again we will get this prompt which indicates that the inputs are received successfully and are stored in the numbers variable otherwise we will get some error here let's now check whether this list has received all the inputs or not for this let's type numbers and hit enter we'll get this list with three items 67 48 and 90 this is what we are expecting so we got the list with a total of three items 67 48 and 90 with this we are done with this topic also that is input a list using loops and we are done with this lecture 
Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.